last time we were together, we developed film. And that took a little while, and some of you came out uh, shining brightly, and then some of you had problems, and you probably had to go out and shoot some more film up and try developing again. But, you know, uh, if you persevere and keep trying, eventually you'll get a nice roll of film. So today, we are going to make a proof of the film that we uh, exposed and developed uh, from last time. So I, I brought a, a, a box of some of my film that's dated from 1994 to the year 2001, 35 millimeter. So here's the negatives here. Now we're gonna just kind of look at them on the light table, and you'll see that they've already been uh, developed, and I've already cut them into strips. We're ready to make a, a proof or a contact print so that we can see the positive images. Right now, these are negative images. That's why we call them negatives. This looks white right here. That's because uh, it's uh, transparent. Uh, the light is shining through it from the uh, light box underneath. Now when we make a print of this, this will be a black area. Well, now here's an area right in here that looks really, really uh, 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 black. However, when we uh, make our print, this will all be white. The negatives uh, that we have developed, when we bring them into the dark room and make our proof sheet, we will get our first positive which is a lot easier to look at, and we can decide uh, what is good exposure, what is good composition. So that's why we're making a uh, proof sheet or a contact print. People use the same word for uh, the same thing. So now let's go in the dark room and make a proof. Come on. Come on, kids, come on. So kids, here's our dark room in here. And just for this recording, I took the safe lights and cranked them up a little bit. So actually when we say dark room, it's not as dark as when you were loading your film and you couldn't see your hands. That was scary. In this room, it's pleasantly uh, dim and warm uh, to uh, uh, the experience. So we turned up the safe lights so you can see more of what I'm doing. So let's go down to this end and there's an enlarger here that I've got all set up. Let's look at the enlarger and look at all its parts. So I've turned on this light here, and here's our enlarger. At the very top, we have the head of the enlarger, and there's a light bulb up here. You also have, uh, from the head, you have a, 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 an area where eventually your negative, when you make a single print, will go into its right in here, but I'll talk about that during our next lesson. Now the next area that's important is where our lens is, and here's where our lens is. Here's our photographic lens. This is the same sort of lens that you used with your camera. It also has apertures on it. Here's f4, 5.6, f8, f11, and f16. The only difference between this lens and your camera's lens, this is made for flat focusing. Focusing, you got a flat negative, you got a flat piece of paper, so that's what it works best at. Uh, flatness, as opposed to your camera lens, which sees a three-dimensional world of depth. So those are constructed a little different. I'll put this lens uh, back in. Uh, now there is uh, a very important uh, feature of this enlarger, which uh, the height of the, the enlarger head. Uh, right now I have it up kind of high, but there's a crank that allows you to lower the entire enlarger like this, or raise it up. It's usually found on the right-hand side of the enlarger. Some are on the left, but most of them are on the right. Uh, for making our contact print or our proof, I like to raise the head of the enlarger up so that when I turn on the enlarger, the light floods the full area. Later on, when you make your uh, prints, and you might make small prints, you might make large prints, you'll have to control this, and it does affect your exposure. So, but we'll get back to that later on. Now, there's another thing uh, with the, uh, the enlarger you have to control, and that is the focusing, and this we'll talk about next time. But this little uh, wheel right here changes the relationship between your negative and where the lens is, so it's like a focusing knob. And you, you know, when you take pictures of your uh, camera, you have to focus also. So this is the same idea. We won't worry about that right now. We'll, we'll get back to that uh, in our next uh, lesson. So right now, I'm just gonna kind of raise this up like this, and now I'm going to dim the lights and we'll turn on the enlarger and I want to talk about the aperture. So let me turn this light off. When you think about an enlarger, it really is a camera in reverse. 
because what the camera does, it has film inside, right? And then you open up the lens to let the outer world, the light from the outer world, go in through the lens and hit the film. This is just the reverse. You have light inside the enlarger and you turn on the light and up down below you'll have photographic paper. So, uh, so it's just like positive, negative. The enlarger is the opposite of a camera. And now to turn on the enlarger, we need to make use of our timer. So each enlarger has a timer and each timer works a little differently. If I just want to turn on the light of the enlarger, there's a little button here, I press it. So the light of the enlarger is on here. I can also raise this little thing so you can see the light uh, inside the enlarger is on. So that turns the light of the enlarger on. Now since the uh, light is on, let's just play with the aperture of the lens. So right now it's wide open here, I'll put this down. It's wide open, you can see it in my hand. Now that's f4, here's 5.6. Uh, F8, F11, F16. Some of the lenses also go to F22, and some of them open up as wide as F2.8 or F2. So, but this one goes from like F, you know, 4 all the way to F16. So, the the bigger the uh, the aperture, F4, the more light comes out. Because remember, those are, are fractions. Uh, and then the the uh, F16 lets in the least amount of light. Lets out the least amount of light. For doing a, a, a proof sheet or a contact print, what I do is open it wide open and then stop it down about two stops. So it'd be one, two, and that's about f8. So that's getting the uh, lens set for your uh, doing your proof sheet or your contact print. Now, looking at this timer, you need to set the timer to a certain time, and you use that for making your test strips or your contact prints. Right now I have it set for three, but I can change that to four, five, or six, or even less. Here's two, and I can also change it to um, a 12 or 22. So I'll, I'm going to keep it at three, three seconds, and that's, uh, uh, th that works well with these type of enlargers and in this environment. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a, uh, to do a contact print to expose our photographic paper. Uh, using those negatives. We, we really don't know what the time should be, so we need to make a little practice print. It's called a test strip, uh, and what it does is a series of uh, exposures uh, that allow you to go from light to dark uh, with, your, um, uh, with your negatives, so that you can decide which looks best. And what the test strip does, it incorporates the height of the enlarger, the aperture of your lens, the quality or the density of your negatives and the type of photographic paper that you, uh, you're you using. So there's a lot of variables and what the test strip does is it reduces all these variables to just one variable and that's time and the time is going to be three seconds. So watch how I do this, okay? Now when we make our proof, our uh, uh, print, we're going to do a test strip. So the first thing we do is a test strip and I do a test strip you know, I've been doing photography for a long time. I always do test strips because it saves you time in the long run. You're going to need a sheet of glass, and each enlarger has a sheet of glass, usually found in the drawer right underneath the enlarger. So we'll get out our sheet of glass. I did take precautions and I cleaned the sheet of glass using Windex, a little rag, to make it uh, so that it looks better. So now I've got the glass clean. Now I also have my negative. So here's my negatives. Get these out. And I'll put the glass up like this so it's kind of raised up. And now I'm going to get out my photographic paper. And I have a number of, of different types of paper. It's sold in the bookstore. You can also buy it online. You can go to West Photo. You can go to National Camera. They also still sell paper. Now this is paper that has to be used in a dark room. It's not inkjet paper. So uh, it's about the same cost. Uh, and we can buy either 25 sheets or 100 sheets. I usually get 100 sheets because I'll go through that within a semester quite easily. It does come in a protective black plastic uh, that keeps the uh, paper safe and you can keep that paper in the black plastic and put it in the drawer. These drawers are not light type, so that's why you have to keep the paper in the black plastic. But when you're ready to use it, you can open it up and you can pull out a sheet of paper, which I will, and let's just look at this sheet of paper. Notice that the paper on one side is kind of glossy. You can make an exposure through the back of the paper, but it would be uh, a much longer exposure and it would also be out of focus. 
I'll kind of move this paper around, and I don't know if you can see the shine, the gloss. So this is the glossy side of the paper. It goes up to receive the light. So now what I'm going to do is take my negative, put it on the photographic paper just like this. Nice and see how it fits very nicely. Then I put it down underneath the enlarger. Then I take my glass and put the glass on the top. So and the weight of the glass presses the film against the paper and has a good contact to make sure that your image is sharp. If you don't use the glass, you can make a proof sheet, but your uh, paper will look kind of uh, out of focus, so it won't look good. So always use glass. Now we're ready for our test exposure. And the other thing that we need, which I pull out of nowhere, is a plain piece of cardboard. Now this cardboard is issued by North Hannaford Community College. I give it to each one of you. You can use this for the entire semester. Free. This cardboard allows us to block the light for certain exposures. So here we go with exposure number one. I'm going to turn on the light and expose the photographic paper for three seconds because I already set the timer to three seconds. Are you ready? Here we go. Here's the little button right here. I press this button. Here it goes. And the light goes on for three seconds. And then it goes off. And then I take my cardboard and cover it like this. And another three seconds. And again like this. And another three seconds. So each time I move it, I'm giving three more seconds of exposure to the photographic paper. So I forget how many times it did, about five. So I went three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen seconds of light. But uh, this is held at three because I covered it. And then this was held at six because I covered it. So that's what you use the cardboard for. Now I'll pick up the glass right here, leave the negatives here, and now I'll take my photographic paper and we're gonna go over to our first development bath. And it's about a minute and a half to two minutes in the developer. So I put it right in the developer and we start to agitate. Now I rock the tray and there's also these little tweezers here that allow you to, or print tongs, and here the image is starting to come up. Isn't that something? Ah, uh, these print tongs only work so good, so now I'll just take my hand and stick it. And now I'm gonna start flipping the paper around like this. And you can see the images are coming up. Now, after a minute and a half to two minutes, and no longer, because there's no point. RC paper, which is the type of paper you're using, only develops in about two minutes. And then after that, there's no point. So now we'll just continue like this. Give a little shake, drip off the excess uh, developer into the stop bath. And what the stop bath does is it stops the action of the developer. It's just like your film. Remember, we had developer for our film. And then we had to stop the action of the film. And this is the same sort of uh, mild acetic acid, the same stop that we use. And it's only about, about uh, five, 10 seconds, let it drip, 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 into the fix. Now we go into the fix. And the fix, there's two ways that I fix. One, to make a judgment and throw the piece of paper away. So that's a short fix of about 15 to 20 seconds. Two, a fix to preserve the print so it lasts 100 years. So the first way we do it is like 10, 15 seconds. And all we want to do is make sure that the, the paper has fixed long enough so that we can bring it out in the light and select the best time for our proof sheet. The second way is if we want to save the proof sheet to hand in to Mr. Agar, the photo instructor, as part of your grade for the course and you want to at least last to the end of the semester so you need to fix three minutes three minutes now uh, we're going to come back and do a full uh, proof sheet this is just a test strip so let's go out and take a look at this now let's see what we got here here's our proof sheet at the very bottom you could see my first exposure three seconds and then you can see a line here and here is our second exposure six seconds and then it goes up to nine seconds up in here, and then probably 12 seconds up in there. So it goes from being a little light to maybe being a little dark. 
Now the images up in the nine seconds, these start to look pretty good. Um, so th this whole area in here looks good. This is too light. This looks pretty good. Here's another test. Look at the film edge. Can you see the film edge here, how gray? I mean, you can see it's light gray at three seconds. Then as you go to the next one, which is six seconds, you can just barely see the film edge, the paper behind it's black, and the little nomenclature uh, and numbers are all more or less white. So this uh, three, six, nine, nine is, is probably, uh, three or uh, six or nine is probably good exposure for this whole sheet because you can't be perfect for each one. You, you've got to just do a general uh, exposure for everything. When we get up into the 12 and 15 seconds, it doesn't look bad, the images don't look bad, but then you can't see the film edge and the nomenclature gets kind of gray. So I think I'm gonna go for a, uh, I'm gonna go for uh, six seconds, six seconds for everything. And you, but you know, I could go a little bit longer, I could go seven seconds, or I could go a little bit less, I could go five seconds. I think I'll, I'll pick six seconds. Let's keep this here and let's go use uh, another sheet of paper and do a full proof sheet at six seconds. So come on back into the dark room. We're not done yet. Before you go back to your enlarger, you know, wash off your hands wherever you can find some running water. Uh, and then over here we have some paper towels. So, uh, and you can, you can bring towels from home. I encourage people to do that. Sometimes we run out of paper towels here. Uh, and when we do, uh, ask me and I'll refresh the paper towel dispenser. It's very important that your hands be clean and dry with no chemicals on it so that when you handle your paper, you don't get little white marks on them. So now with your hands clean and dry, no chemicals on them, uh, we're gonna go back and take out a sheet of paper and redo a whole proof sheet. Okay, so now, take out our another nice sheet of paper. Just like so. Fold the flaps over so don't, there's our shiny side of our paper. Put our film here on top of it again, underneath. Now, now here's things I'm not going to do. I'm not going to change the height of the enlarger by cranking this up and down. That would become uh, a variable that would throw all of our testing out the door. I I'm not going to change the aperture. I'm gonna leave the aperture just where it was. So the height of the enlarger the same, the aperture the same, the same paper, the same film, the test that we just did, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 seconds, is based upon keeping this all the same. Now we're ready to expose our photographic paper. I don't need the cardboard, but what I'll do is just press the button on the, on the timer so it goes on for three seconds. And then it goes off and then hit it again. And that's a total of six seconds. And now let's develop our paper. And this time we're going to fix it a little bit longer because we want to hand this in for our uh, final portfolio. Your proof sheets, every time you shoot a picture, every time you shoot up a roll of film, you want to make a proof sheet. You show me the proof sheet after you've made it. We look over the images and we decide what pictures would be good for you to make enlargements of. So it's a quick way to communicate with me and it's also a quick way to communicate with yourself. If you have proof sheets that are way too dark or way too light, it becomes uninspiring to want to make an enlargement. So you have to be inspired. Now, they're already uninspiring enough. They're in black and white. They're teeny tiny. It's hard to see. There's no color. So uh, you've got to make the best uh, proof that you can so you get excited about making uh, a, a uh, enlargement which we'll talk about in our next lesson. So there I've developed the paper, and I let it drip, 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 into the stop bath, and now we're gonna go out and take a look at it. Now here's a little trick too. Sometimes you don't know if you wanna save your print or not, or your proof sheet. Well, you can always fix it 15 seconds, bring it out, look at it in the white light. If you like it, come on back in and continue fixing. If you don't like it, throw it away and start all over again. But if you, if you make a mistake, if you bring a print out there in the white light, and if you look at it, and if, there's, if you don't like it, before you go back in and make another print, know why you don't like it. 
and know what you're going to do to make it better. And if you don't know, ask somebody, like me. So I've just fixed it a little bit here, and we'll get another tray, and we'll, let's look at this in the white light. All right, so kids, here's our, our proof sheet, which we're going to be able to uh, uh, turn in for uh, this assignment. And I guess this uh, is called uh, um, uh, our first roll of film. And uh, we have the uh, numbers here starting at zero. Here's zero, one, two, three, four. So they're in sequence. I see that I took a lot of pictures of a cat in a cage. Some exposures, like look at this exposure. That's overexposed. See, that's way too light. But it looks more like a mistake, if anything. And then uh, some maybe are a little dark. Well, here's another one that's too light. Um, but, you know, you can still make prints out of these that look too light. And some that are maybe a little dark, like maybe that one's a little dark. Here's a series of three pictures. One, two, three. This one is normal exposure. This one is one stop more exposure. And this one is one stop less exposure with the camera. So we, we, of course, we gave this the same exposure with the proof sheet, but then it clearly shows the normal exposure looks good. One stop doesn't look bad, and actually the underexposure doesn't look bad. Now we're going to uh, uh, wash our print. So we put it into the print washer, and we put it face down. Let the uh, agitating devices simply move and circulate the water. It uh, shoots water out into the tray, but it also sucks water uh, out and gets rid of it. It's the, the water that has the fix in it that it's pulling out. And uh, I do this for about uh, four minutes, four or five minutes. And then after four or five minutes, we're ready to dry our print. And there's two ways you can do it. Now let me, okay, let's say four or five, we'll just pretend four or five minutes has gone by. And I'll get a little tray here. So like, We'll bring it out like this so the water doesn't uh, drip on the floor. We're, we're back out here in our work area, and here's our, our print. It's been uh, washed, and uh, uh, I'll turn on our print dryer right here. So this is our dryer. Here's the on switch right here, and uh, here there's speed and there's heat. I usually keep the speed around 7 or 8, uh, and the heat around the same. So if you go too fast, it does. It, first it makes noise. And then second of all, it uh, doesn't dry it very well. So keep it down to about seven or eight. And then the heat, uh, again, between seven and eight. And we'll just put it through, face up. And there's little fingers in there, rubberized fingers, that attach to your print, gently feed it through. Goodbye. Then the print comes out the opposite end, all nice and dry. And this is method number one. And this is this works 90% of the time. Sometimes the print never comes out. It wraps around the rollers in there, and we have to take the whole thing apart and uh, rip your print apart. So that happens occasionally. If you don't want to run that risk, there's also these little drying racks here. And you can simply put your wet print into the drying racks like so and let it air dry. And in the old days, before we had the print dryer, before we had these, uh, and at, at home I just have a clothesline and I just pin it up like this and let it drip dry. So I mean, whatever works. This is a slow method, this is a slow method, and this is a more a quick method with an occasional um, uh, problem. So that's it for making a proof. Now, with the proof sheet dry, we can look at this. You can bring this proof sheet to me and we can kind of look at it. Uh, I noticed that on one picture here, the kitty in the cage, I did the normal exposure, overexposure, underexposure. So apparently I thought that was interesting enough because back in 97 when I did the pictures. So uh, maybe I'll make a print of these. So I think that'll be our next lesson is me making a print of one of these uh, pictures of the uh, kitty in a cage. Class is dismissed. We'll see you next time.